All right, welcome back to Logan Simmons Photography. Great to have you with uh, me here again today. And I want to talk about another photo editing app for the Mac. And I think it's also available on Windows as well. And it's called Photoscape 10. And we've been looking at basically these free apps. Are they good you know, in comparison to Adobe or other paid services? Uh, you know, is it worth your time? In fact, a lot of these do have a paid version as well, so we kind of compare. We're going to look at Photoscape today. Um, but before we get into it, make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Hit that subscribe button. Hit the bell notification so you know when a new video is out. And once you finish watching the video, comment down below. Hit that like button if you do like it. Uh, helps us out a lot. Helps with the algorithm and lets us know you're liking what you're seeing. So uh, let me go ahead and get into it. Of course, I'm recording my screen. And I do have Photoscape open right now. And you can see it's uh, arranged into just different modules here, which you know might be something like Adobe Lightroom in a way. You have your viewer, which we're in right now. In fact, uh, you can, of course, load images in here. It's kind of like just a regular Apple Finder or the Microsoft Windows Explorer, I guess they call it. But there is kind of like some basic star rating and stuff like that. So I've got a video in there. Uh, you do have editor there, which you know is like what it sounds, your basic photo editing. Uh, cutout is kind of a cool masking tool, uh, batch if you want to apply the same edits to a large number of images. Collage and combine are kind of similar. They, so they can put a bunch of images together in kind of a collage, although the collage mode I think offers more design options. You can create a GIF or a GIF depending on how you pronounce that. Some animation, print, some different you know settings and store allows you to purchase uh, the pro version which is $39.99 at the time that we're recording this. But we're going to look at the free version and see how it works. So I've got the basic thing here. I can't really do that much. Of course, I could zoom in. Uh, this is a very, very, uh, not, not a super big image that I've uh, put in here today just for our demonstration purposes. But, you know, I, of course, if it was, you know, 100 megapixels, it would zoom right in there. And we could go ahead and edit. You can see there's the basic settings uh, down there, which is kind of a nice way to do it. Now, probably the most obvious thing you'd want to do, let's say you got this image here, you're going to go ahead and hit editor. Uh, whoops. Let's do that again. So I'm going to go back to viewer and then I'm going to hit editor and voila because I didn't load that into editor before I did this. No, no, no. Don't remember that. Uh, basically it shows up like this. There's no image. You wonder, well, how does that work right there? So of course you can see here, drop your photo here. I could do it from the file browser over here. I could hit open and there'd be a dialogue that would pop up. I could find it. Uh, a couple ways you can do it. You can right click on the image from the viewer uh, and go ahead and hit edit and that'll bring you from viewer into edit right way or there is also a button whoops down here as well these little edit buttons there so you can go ahead and hit that and it automatically brings it into the editor kind of quirky I don't know why you can't go from viewer to what the image you're viewing to editor and just edit that image but for some reason it doesn't want to do that here so it brings us into the edit module and then you see over here as well, there's color, film, light, frame, and certain some various tools there. Uh, it's kind of weird the way things are arranged here um, because some of the stuff you can basically do the same thing in different modules. But let's go ahead and start up here. Uh, lots of cool, and this is included with the free version, these cool kind of artificial intelligence editing. You know, for example, I can go ahead here and do magic color, uh, which kind of reminds me of DxO, their photo lab software. In fact, if you haven't seen that review, click that up there. It has kind of a similar feature to really saturate, bring contrast out. This works very, very well. So I can go ahead and actually move this up here, increase the effectiveness, um, which is really, really cool. Uh, and it's got some you know, nice effect. It doesn't look overdone. It's a nice saturation and creates color contrast, what have you. It does a good job. You can also have that histogram down that automatically pops up. But one really cool thing is there is masking options in the free version of this program. So let's say I like magic color, but maybe I only want it up there in the mountains. So I'll go ahead and hit mask. And I've got a brush. There's different ways I can do a brush. Let's go ahead and keep this one. We'll do it here very quickly. You can see in red, this is the mask that I am drawing. Fairly simple right there. And now, as I do it, you can see the magic color is only being applied to the mountain range right there. So that's, I think, really, really nice to have. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and hit apply there. I think I like that quite a bit. Now, let's say you want to do some basic, maybe some levels, some contrast. I'm going to go open adjustments. And you can see there's some options down here, but the kind of the stuff you would want, you know, curves, let's say levels, uh, is pro version only. So weirdly, the more basic basic features, it would appear anyway initially, 
uh, are only available in the pro version. Um, now I've got some really cool stuff, you know, surrealistic. Uh, you know, that's kind of a cool filter I could do if I want to do that. Uh, we can look at, I believe in here, probably some uh, we've got like HDR or something. That must be somewhere else. You know, automatic color. I could do that. Uh, we can go in here and do a vignette. Again, that's in the free version, and we can adjust that. Uh, color fill is kind of cool. This is more what I think of you know, black and white images you might add a tone, but I could certainly do it to a color image as well. You know, maybe I want to make it look like I'm on some sort of alien planet and it's kind of green or something like that. You know, we could go ahead and do something like that. You know, that would be kind of cool. But again, that's in the free version. Uh, I'm not understanding why this is in the free version, but more advanced stuff is not, of course, you know, sharpen. We've got all that in here. Now, that would be way too much sharpening. So we'll go ahead and cancel that. This image is basically done pretty much there. Um, you know, effects, and of course, let me collapse these down so we don't lose it there. This is almost kind of like all those old Photoshop filters from back in the day. So, you know, let's say, you know, jitter. It's almost looks like a window or something like that. Uh, make it into a watercolor. You can do that. Uh, these are not things that I am particularly into, but maybe you are. You know, lots of fun, fun stuff in there. Transformations, tiny planet. I don't know why you'd use this one per se. Um, but, you know, we can zoom in and do something really weird there. Kind of looks like a planet because of the color palette the image had. But, you know, not particularly useful for me. And of course, you do have, uh, like, for, you know, for example, lens profile collection, correction if you wanted to adjust uh, for maybe some distortion. That's only in the pro version. So there you go. So kind of some cool stuff in there. But strangely, it would appear basic adjustments are not included. So let's go over to color. And this is kind of weird. So I can go in here and say, you know, original color. And I can go ahead and brighten the image. And that's kind of just like doing it like we normally would do. You know, I can go ahead here and do clarity. I can do contrast all right in here, which, you know, just again, it's kind of, it's kind of odd there. Uh, let me go ahead and maybe increase some saturation there. I know we did that kind of that magic color up there. Maybe we want a little bit more, uh, who knows, maybe a little bit more clarity as well. Some fun stuff there. Um, so, you know, why not just edit in here as opposed to editing over there uh, and get away with that, not having the free version? Maybe there's maybe not quite as many options, but here we go. You know, you know, for example, I can go ahead and do my hue saturation luminance right here. I've got my uh, exposure up and down. I can, I can move hue around, all sorts of stuff, dodging and burning. Uh, although it doesn't look like it's selective, it does option. It does all through that. Kind of some different ways to do the same thing, uh, which is kind of interesting. You do have to hit apply once all that's done. Otherwise, it's just going to disappear there. Um, so let's go over to film. This is kind of some cool stuff, some basic film filters. But I think some of them are pretty interesting. You know, maybe you wanted to make it look like you shot this on Provia Fuji film. There's an option, or you know, there's Via, there's Kodak Portrait, a little bit less saturation. You know, slide film, you process in color uh, chemicals. You can do that with cross processing. Now, some of these uh, obviously are pro only. It says they are pro only, but you know, some, some decent stuff is available for free there, I think. Uh, duo tone, some different color options. You know, man, that's pretty cool. Maybe you want to do that. Primavera there. Uh, old photos, you can add some weird effects. You know, some of those actually look pretty, pretty good. Uh, you know, we can add some, some bad. Maybe we shot it on film when there's some issues. We've got that there. Uh, texture, I don't know why you might want to do that, but you could if you were so inclined. But I'm not going to do that today. Hit cancel. Uh, light, maybe you want to add a lens flare, which I I don't think will work for this particular uh, image. Whoops, and it's telling me, oh gosh, that's the, that's the pro version. I can't use that one, so I'm a little bit limited here. There we go, maybe this one's free. You know, maybe I've got some weird stuff going on over there. I don't think it fits in this image, but you know, I could do that if I wanted to do that. Uh, let's see if it lets me delete this here. I guess I'm gonna have to hit cancel. Go ahead and get out of that. Uh, now frame options, you know, I can certainly add a basic frame if I wanted to do that. Uh, insert allows me to insert other images images, tools, I guess it's just some basic stuff. You know, hey, you want to paint on there? You know, go ahead and do it. There you go. Easy as pie. Uh, again, lots of, lots of powerful tools in here, even though we do have the free version. So I do like that quite a bit. So, you know, we can go ahead and save that. Now there's some, we can do it in a different file name, for instance, you know, JPEG, TIFF. Uh, it does also read raw files uh, if you want to go ahead and do that. So fairly easy to use. Uh, lots of powerful tools, and I'm really impressed, especially for a free version. Now, cutout, 
and it looks like it decided to load this image as opposed to not loading it into the editor, I can go in here and say, you know what, that sky, uh, let me see here, magic eraser, maybe I don't want the sky. Now I kind of selected there before. Uh, now what you might want to use this in is we could save this image in and bring it, save it out, I guess, and bring it into Photoshop or another editor and very easily paint something else into that particular area. So that's kind of where uh, you'd want to use that lasso. I could, you know, save this area. I want to go ahead and cut that out. Uh, you know, Again, very, very easy to use. Batch processing, if you want to do a lot of images with the same edits quickly, that's an option. You know, collage, I could add a couple images here with different, uh, different designs. Combine seems to do the same thing, uh, but with just uh, probably not as many options. Uh, GIF, I'm not going to go into that, but if you want to go ahead and create an animated GIF or something like that with maybe somebody clapping and put it on your website, I don't know. You can go ahead and do that. Uh, you do have your print options right here. Uh, if we had a printer installed, I could show you that, but I don't do much printing anymore. So tools. Um, it's even like a screen capture. I don't know why you would have that in a photo editing program, but there it is. Why not? And then the store, of course, allows you to purchase the image, uh, excuse me, purchase the program, the pro version, for $39.99. But I am just really impressed with this particular program. Uh, of the free photo editors, I I'm wondering if you're getting the most, at least the ones I've looked at so far. Maybe you can comment down below on a different one I can review, but you're getting a lot for, well, basically nothing. It is a free version. So I definitely think you should check it out, Photoscape 10. There is a link down there below in the description. And again, let me know what you think about the program or other free options uh, that you might use, or maybe low cost options. I think that's kind of what we're trying to figure out with this series. If you don't have a lot of money and you still want to edit, how do you do it? So that is that today. I definitely appreciate you watching Logan Simmons Photography. Again, do make sure you're subscribed to the channel. And if you liked it, hit that like button. And I do appreciate you watching. You have a good one. Bye-bye.